Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority in the city of Brockton. My name is Phil Griffin. I'm chairman of the board of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. I want to welcome the governor, the lieutenant governor, our state delegation, the mayor, and the city council. But most importantly, I want to welcome the Carpenter family here today. This building really stands as a tribute to the late mayor. Uh, he was someone that really understood urban, urban renewal. He understood that this garage would be a linchpin for the downtown urban renewal. Uh, as you can see, last spring, there were cranes sprouting up like tulips. And that happened not by happenstance. It happened by a man who had a plan. And more importantly, he had the fortitude to see it through. Unfortunately, we lost that mayor, but uh, now it's really up to us to continue his legacy. So today should be a day to remember Bill, but also think very fondly about him, but also think about how you can better the city, because that's one thing Bill always was concerned with is what he could do more and harder and work harder for the city, and I think that's really the message that we should leave here today with. So let me uh, move along. I know everybody out here is quite cold, including myself. I'm going to bring up the mayor of Brockton, Moises Rodriguez. No, it's not one bit cold. When we have such a great day here in the city, I don't think the, the weather is going to affect us one way or the other. But Governor, Lieutenant Governor, welcome. Uh, members of the city council who are here, uh, members of the school committee that I've seen a few. Uh, it's a great day for the city. Uh, I'm proud to be a Brocktonian. I'm proud to stand in this spot where I'm sure Bill Carpenter would have loved to uh, continue to serve the city. But as Phil said, you know, uh, life goes on and um, we missed him greatly because he was a great leader in the city, uh, but it's up to us to continue the legacy. Um, we stand here today in front of this beautiful structure that I hope will become the centerpiece in our downtown. And I'm glad that the governor and the lieutenant governor actually took the time to come down here to, uh, to see that Brockton continues to be open for business. Uh, we want a city that continues to prosper. We want also the state that continues to support the city. Because, believe it or not, uh, possibly being the fourth largest community in Massachusetts, since we have the fourth largest school system, uh, I want to make sure that the state continues to recognize that and continue to support us because we're here also to support the state. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, I just want to, I don't know if you noticed that I actually have um, a, a tie on that actually has uh, Santa playing soccer. You know what that means? That we're still looking for that soccer field money. <laughs> and I made a wish. Is that what it is? It's in your truck. <laughs> I made a wish and Santa said, bring your tie and the soccer ball and the Lieutenant Governor is coming. So today the garage, probably in another six months or so, a soccer field, right? <laughs> Governor, that's what she said. I'm just saying, I'm just pitching exactly what she said. So I'm hoping that actually that would happen. But I just wanna, I wanna thank uh, the Carpenter family for sharing that man with us. Uh, I wanna thank everybody that actually came down and uh, are here to support and continue to support our city. And as I said, uh, trust in us because we have a great deal of trust in ourselves and we will continue to make this city a great city in honor of those that came and paved the way before us and uh, we won't forget Bill Carpenter since he's gonna be on this building. But thank you very much for being here. Uh, there's some goodies in the back and there's some other stuff that uh, we have going on in the city as well. But again, I wanna deeply, deeply thank everybody for being here and sharing this great day with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite uh, Governor Charlie Baker, who's been a great friend to the city, and I'd like to have him come up and say a few words. So first of all, um, I just want to say how much we appreciate, and I know I speak for the Lieutenant Governor and, and all the folks on our team, um, the work and the enthusiasm and the energy 
and the indefatigability. Well, that's a shame because every word I say is important. Okay, how's that? Better? Okay. I just want to start by saying how much we appreciate, and I'm speaking for the Lieutenant Governor, myself, and everybody on our team, um, the work and the, and the legacy and the, and the enthusiasm that uh, Bill Carpenter brought to everything he did. Um, he was a really special guy. And, um, and when we were sort of just taking office and, and looking for people who would work with us on the opioid epidemic, uh, we talked to the mayor at that point in time and uh, he didn't even have to think about it for five seconds. He said, no, I'm in. It's a huge issue. Uh, it's a problem in Brockton, but it's a problem everywhere. And I want to be part of the solution. And he threw himself into the work on that commission, which led to um, a series of about 60 recommendations, all of which we've implemented over the course of the past few years. And while we have a ton of work left to do on this issue, we are one of the only states in America that's actually seen a drop in deaths in the last two years. Um, and I know that the work that Bill and others did sort of setting the table for us had a lot to do with that. I also know that um, we had a lot of conversations with him about downtown and what could we work on together uh, to enhance um, the opportunities associated with downtown. And, uh, I drove by a state, a state office building um, that's on a former vacant lot in downtown, and then I drove right by uh, the DA's office, which was moved from another location and on my way here. And, and this in particular came about uh, as a result of a series of conversations with then Economic Development Director Jay Ash, uh, the Lieutenant Governor, the Mayor, and myself. And we just thought this was such a great idea because not only do you get the benefit associated with the parking, you also get the benefit of freeing up a ton of space that can then be put to work uh, to enhance the transit-oriented development opportunities associated with this site. And, um, and I can't tell you how fired up we are about uh, the possibilities and the opportunities that are here, which is why I brought another $920,000 MassWorks grant with me um, for the city to use on streetscapes. Um, But mostly I just want to say that I think this neighborhood, this area, this part of the city, this, this facility, and all the stuff that's going to come with it will be a fitting tribute uh, to a man who really believed in this city and its people and its future. And that's in many respects what, what Bill was all about. And we are, we are grateful to have a chance to, got to, to get to work with him um, while, while we were in office. And, uh, and while we miss him terribly, um, we are never going to forget him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the next lady I'd like to bring up is no stranger to the city. She was a frequent guest down here when Mayor Carpenter was still with us. I'd like to invite up Lieutenant Governor Polito. I guess next time I come, I have to bring my soccer ball. Right. Uh, I just want to say we are here today 100% because of Bill Carpenter. 100%. He was an amazing man, an incredible public servant, and a true friend uh, to this city, to our administration, and to uh, the people of this Commonwealth. He was a very, very special person. So today we come here and we have a heavy heart because we miss him so much. But we also come here today because we're so proud of what he was able to do for this city and we're proud to be able to acknowledge what he did every day as the mayor of this city with his name uh, attached to this building. Now, you know and I know that Bill Carpenter did not get up every day and think about how to get, get his name up in lights. And he certainly never envisioned that his name would be permanently placed on a parking garage. <laughs> But he clearly uh, did bring uh, so much to this city. And I would say it this way, he brought leadership every day. Uh, someone who truly uh, believed 
in the, the power and the, the, the spirit and all that this city has to offer, really being a true city of champions. The one thing I admired about his leadership is despite the challenges and the hard things that we would see happening here in Brockton, he would get up every day and see all the beautiful things happening in this city. And I, I was truly moved by that and he really served as an inspiration to me as a public servant. He also had a great vision. He was a creative man. He was a smart man. He had a great vision for this city. Someone from here really understanding the people and what they would want and really understanding what the vision should be for the future. Clearly not settling for the status quo. And someone that was capable of putting a plan together. And he clearly had an incredible team of people to do that with. Uh, the business community, uh, the folks up at City Hall who also shared his belief and commitment uh, to this community and put the plan together. Now, that plan was not enough for Bill Carpenter. He was not going to just rest with saying, we, we put it together, we've got a good plan and to tout the plan. The plan is only a piece of paper, right, or a, a few pieces of paper. And he truly, truly uh, worked worked it, worked very hard at making that plan become a reality. And what I loved about getting a text or a call from uh, Bill was it was always a sense of urgency to making sure that the plan uh, was, was getting the attention that it deserved for all of you. He was very resourceful, he was a tremendous advocate, yeah, he was relentless about his approach and it paid off. I loved coming here because I felt as a public servant, I would feel that he was accomplishing uh, what needed to get done here, but I'd also leave here feeling encouraged to keep on working hard, not only for this city, but for all the municipalities of this Commonwealth. And when I'd come here, he would say, one more construction project here in Brockton. And I love the momentum that he clearly left us all with uh, on that very, very sad day in July. And what I love more so is that the ribbon cuttings are now, the, the groundbreakings are now becoming rib ribbon cuttings. And these projects are getting completed. Uh, and obviously, we are standing in a very big one uh, that was very important uh, for not only the mayor, but for the downtown development plan, making it possible for more units of housing, market rate housing in this downtown, bringing more people uh, to this great city, uh, be able to access the rail, get to their jobs, come downtown, go to Prova, uh, have a beer, and go to the restaurants and enjoy a good quality of life in the city. That's clearly what he believed in. So today, uh, we are celebrating uh, what uh, is happening here in this city, and it's a real credit to a great man uh, that you, as a community, uh, would look to put his name uh, permanently on this building that was a real integral and critical piece to the future success of this revitalization in downtown Brockton. Uh, so today uh, we leave with a, a feeling of inspiration, right? That there's more work to do, more groundbreakings to be had, and more ribbon cuttings in our future. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Mayor-elect Sullivan and the uh, City Council and all of you as community leaders uh, take the responsibility seriously, and we do too. It's an honor uh, for Governor Baker, for me, for our team to work with all of you. God bless you, and good holidays to you and your family. All right, next up, I'd like to bring up uh, Nick Giaquinto. He's obviously, everybody knows him. He was Bill's chief of staff and is still presently Moise Rodriguez is chief of staff. Nick is here, I assume. Okay. Come on up, Nick. Appreciate it. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can understand me. My lips are frozen. I've been out here for a while. Well, I'd just like to thank everyone for turning out for this special dedication today. I'll tell you that this particular project is symbolic of all of, the, of Brockton's recent progress and certainly everything Mayor Carpenter did to set Brockton on a new path. You know, it's, it's funny, when people first heard about Brockton getting a new downtown parking garage, I think the general response from many people was, 
oh, great, just what we need, a slab of concrete, you know, but not a place to sit down for lunch, recaffeinate, or, or have a beer. And, uh, but we all know there's much more to it than that, uh, and especially with this project. And Mayor Carpenter understood that this was the type of project that only inched us closer to those very things. It's not easy to have buy-in from everyone on an investment like this, but uh, especially the community. But Bill sold the project well, and with the support of the council and leadership from the BRA, uh, we all realized how significant something like this actually is. You know, the potential impact a simple parking garage can have uh, on the economic vitality of an area. And if not for the MassWorks grant funding, this project certainly would not have been possible. Uh, Bill cherished the working relationship we've had with the Baker Polito administration, and I'll tell you, I am going to miss dearly all the times he yelled at me for taking pictures of him next to Governor Baker that he says made him look really small. <laughs> I'd have to remind him on occasion that iPhones don't allow us to crop your height yet. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I couldn't fit you guys in the same frame, it was just tough. <laughs> but while this particular project may not exude the pizzazz or appeal shiny market rate housing developments do, Mayor Carpenter understood its necessity and the opportunity presented to this city to unlock the development potential of the city-owned surfing parking lots all around us. And in this job, I think sometimes the difference between doing the right thing and, and doing the wrong things uh, can be measured by time. And Bill was really only interested in long-term solutions, not band-aids, not impulse decision-making. It's taken us nearly six years and three elections to see the day three cranes will be up in the downtown all at once. And in that time, <clears throat> and in that time, in addition to losing all my hair, we have reached over $180 million worth of investment in our downtown and $360 million in current permitted construction projects. <laughs> Although he knew all of this was coming, I really wish Bill could have stuck around to cut some more ribbons and put some more shovels in the ground. It's become very cliche, I think, to refer to a politician as hands-on, but Mayor Carpenter really set the standard for that definition. He took it to a whole new level by literally dedicating himself to becoming as close to an expert as possible on every urban subject matter. Uh, and as I've said before, you know, being his right-hand man was an exhausting experience, but by default it was also extremely educational. He approached a job from a truly academic perspective and avoided talking points and always engaged in deep thought. It's been Bill's leadership that has finally got Brockton turning the corner, as he would say. People will remember Mayor Carpenter as the change agent that finally unleashed Brockton's untapped potential, and we're beginning to see the fruits of that labor now. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Uh, next up, I'd like to invite Bob Buckley up to say a few words. Bob was the uh, mayor's first chief of staff and a friend of everybody here, I think. Yep. Come on right up, Bob. Thank you, Phil. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was Inauguration Day 2014. The ceremony at City Hall was over. The nice reception at Thorny Lee was over, and it was just the new mayor and the new chief of staff sitting in the mayor's office trying not to be overwhelmed. I looked at him and I said, Mayor, if you do great things in this city, they're going to name buildings after you. I paused for a moment. He took a sip of his Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> and being the good chief of staff, I also presented the alternative. If you stink at this job, you're going to be, they're going to name a urinal after you in the parking lot, and there'll be a long line waiting to use it. <laughs> Standing here now, we now, we know how that story ended. As the city of Brockton honors its biggest cheerleader, its loudest voice, and a leader that has no peer. The hottest working guy in Brockton politics may be at rest right now, but let this garage and other Carpenter tributes remind us of the man that we lost. There are many people who deserve credit,
but that's what a chief of staff does, so he's already done that. But there is one person I would like to give accolades to. Governor Baker, having watched you from afar, you've made many excellent decisions. And as a Democrat, that absolutely kills me. <laughs> Just... But the best decision you made was early in your campaign when you brought Karen Polito on board. Lieutenant Governor, what you have done for the cities and towns in Massachusetts has been unprecedented. Your accessibility to mayors, selectmen, and town managers has been unmatched, and you have redefined what a Lieutenant Governor should do. The mayor always knew you were a phone call away, and while you didn't always have a, night, a blank check with you, you were always there with solutions and alternatives to our problems. He always considered you part of our team. I understand Mayor Alex Sullivan is not here today. He's at the uh, new mayor's conference at Harvard University, and I can tell you there's one guy who would strongly encourage him to be there right now, and that would be Mayor Bill Carpenter. Um, Bill learned a great deal at that new mayor's conference, and I'm sure Mr. Sullivan is doing the same as well. But it's now up to you, Mr. Sullivan, to fill this garage with carpenters, electricians, general contractors, and other great union workers so that the downtown area of Brockton will become a vital commercial area. Don't believe what others have said before you. Brockton requires a strong mayor to succeed. And if you need proof, all you need to do is look from January 6, 2014 to July 3, 2019 for your proof. A strong leader makes things happen in this city. And I wish Mayor, Sullivan elect, uh, mayor, mayor elect Sullivan well in his new venture. In conclusion, Thank you for all those who made this garage possible and for those who keep the legacy of Bill Carpenter alive every day. Thank you. Thank you, Buck. Uh, next up, I'd like to bring up Bill Carpenter, Jr. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Carpenter family, I'd like to thank everybody who's made today possible. Rob Jenkins and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, City Council, State Representatives, Rob May and his team. After Mayor Carpenter's passing, there were a lot of ideas and suggestions of ways to forever memorialize him as part of the city. Some realistic, such as naming schools or roadways after him. Some not so realistic, such as renaming the city after him. <laughs> now, as a family, we're not opposed to that, but for a city like Brockton that's steeped in tradition and history, that probably has some long-reaching implications. Um, Robert Sullivan's not here today, but if we're standing in the city of Bill Carpenter, he probably would have reconsidered his run for mayor, I'd imagine. <laughs> When we found out that the garage was going to be named after Bill, we thought it was extremely fitting because when he first ran for mayor, he ran on a platform of inclusion, public safety, and economic development with an emphasis on downtown revitalization. And we think he hit on all three of them. And especially with the downtown revitalization, it was, uh, it was not a small endeavor that he was taking on. And Rob can attest to that. For nearly 60 years, the city seen a decline uh, in the downtown area. Uh, but with a vision and a plan and putting together a strong team, uh, we've actually seen an increase or an incline in development downtown. And we're seeing revitalization in the downtown area. So this parking garage stands here as a catalyst to that economic development and that revitalization here in the downtown. Uh, so it couldn't be more fitting that it's going to be named after him. We're very pleased uh, and again, very happy uh, that he's going to be honored in such a way.
Brockton is under construction. Brockton will continue to be under construction. We will witness a full revitalization of the downtown area. This garage will be the catalyst for that. Mayor Carpenter will be the reason, and they will forever sit here on Petronelli Way together, serving as a perpetual reminder of where it all began. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Before we do the unveiling, there's several other people that I want to uh, give thanks to. They were really uh, unbelievable during this whole project. Bob Malley, the executive director of the Parking Authority, uh, was a great help to us. Rob May, who I think has to go down as one of Bill's great accomplishments, bringing him to the city. He's done a great job not only here, but on other projects. And Robert Jenkins, the executive director of the BRA, did an outstanding job. Now I'd like to have, uh, we're going to do the unveiling with the Capita family. Please come up.